start with your most recent acquisition in uh, in Lafferty and uh, the reasons behind the trade and what you hope to gain. Well, uh, going through the, the uh, discussions with the coaching staff this summer. Uh, and uh, the options of line combinations and, and how we performed here early on in, in preseason. I felt uh, I wanted to be a little bit harder to play against, uh, a little bit stiffer with the puck. And uh, when Sam uh, became available, uh, we talked and we felt that he is another guy that uh, can play in different positions in the bottom six and, and bring, brings that speed. Uh, Speed, grit, uh, versatility to your team. So we felt that that was a good addition. In setting your opening day roster, um, there's a couple of defensemen who, whether it's Susie, who Rick said was week to week, and, and Brisbo, who we haven't yet gotten an update on, doesn't seem like you necessarily for sure have six healthy defenders. Are, are you making additional roster moves today? Uh, we're not making any roster moves uh, as of today. Uh, we, uh, you all guys know that, that there's been uh, a flu going around the team as well here. So um, a couple of guys I was aware of uh, skated this morning. So I don't, I've been busy, so I don't really know who's going to join, the, join the, the main group here or not. But uh, I will talk to the coaches and, and, uh, or staff and see if there needs to be some uh, um, more transactions made uh, leading up for tomorrow's game or not. Did you have an update on Brisbois specifically? I, I don't uh, I don't have an update uh, on him specifically. Is there a chance he can play tomorrow? Um, I think uh, at this point here, as I said, I, I've been busy this morning, so I don't know who uh, will join the main group or not. But uh, I think, uh, as we said, we've gone through uh, training camp and and a couple guys with bumps and bruises here and uh and also the flu had hit uh, the dressing room here so uh we'll see uh who's going to be available for for tomorrow i guess a couple of guys might be uh game time decisions how do you assess your camp and where your team stands now yeah um uh, i've been very pleased with the camp i've been very pleased with uh, how the coaching staff has worked uh their plan leading up to coming into Victoria, um, what we wanted to accomplish and how we uh, want to teach the players, um, system, uh, structure, uh, details, uh, the interaction between the coaches and the players. I uh, was very pleased to see that. And uh, we're just going to continue to, uh, uh, to emphasize on the team game and the team structure and, and how we want to become uh, more and better as a team. Patrick, how many guys are dealing with the flu? There seems to be a resurgence of COVID. Are they dealing with that? Uh, there is uh, the, the uh, last game against Calgary. There were uh, uh, more than a handful of players that that would a little bit under the weather there, but they played through it here. And then um, you guys uh, noticed that uh, some of the players uh, didn't uh, participate in the practice on Sunday, I believed. Um, so there is there is some. Uh, Something going around. What about COVID? So or no, COVID? Uh, no COVID. No COVID. But uh, has the timeline changed on Ilya Mikhail? Uh, the uh, in terms of when he'll be ready to go. Well, I, I think he wants to play uh, <laughs> tomorrow, but I think we uh, we're at that uh, stage here where uh, uh, it's a fine balance uh, when pushing him or not. But uh, he's done. Uh, I've been been really impressed with uh, how he works. Uh, and, and how he been uh, really pushing it to be ready. Uh, it's, it's a discussion between uh, our medical staff and Ilya and, and the coaches here. Uh, I would believe that uh, he's, he's pretty close to returning here. The fact that he's not going to be ready for opening night, I mean, I think it is now fair to ask, should he have played into late January? Should you have shut him down and had the procedure sooner? Uh, again, I think uh, I believe that uh, was Adelia's agent that uh, had a statement uh, t t this morning. Uh, I think every player is, is uh, different in regarding the rehabs. When, whenever there is a procedure like this, uh, there is a process uh, behind it uh, where, where we, uh, myself included, uh, communicate with, uh, with his agent, uh, Ilya himself and the doctors, and, and looking at... Uh, uh, the options we have. 
And, uh, and again, I think uh, this is more uh, individually how long it takes for, for different players to, uh, to be ready or not. So. Yeah, but that's still an aggressive timeline for an ACL injury to think you could be back in close to eight months from when you got the surgery, right? Was there, you know, if you had a do-over, would you have done it differently? I believe that uh, some players have been back uh, earlier. Uh, and as I said, uh, this is always a conversation between uh, the player and the agent and, and myself and our doctor. So that was something that, uh, that was, uh, you know, decided back then. Patrick, when a player's coming off a surgery to repair a torn ACL, which is a pretty severe uh, ailment, uh, do you have to ramp them up gradually? Do you as a manager have to be a bit patient with them as they find their feet and their hands again? I, th I think we need, uh, as, a, as a staff, uh, you know, have the big picture in, in, in mind. And I think that's where we're dealing with Ilya right now. I think he's, uh, over the last, uh, I would say, two, three weeks significant have uh, improved in all areas. And, and uh, he's close. And as I said, I think he wants to play. But I think we want to be on the cautious side and make sure that, that he's 110% when he's coming back. And with Susi, um, he was described as week to week by Rick. Are you able to share anything, even if it's just I, lower body or anything additional about the timeline? I, it, it is a lower body. And uh, he's, I believe he was one of the guys skated this morning. So I don't know if he, you know, what, uh, the medical side dis um, decided after if he's going to join the practice or not, but uh, I don't know if it's uh, if it's coming down to day to day, if it has changed day to day. But uh, uh, the last update uh, was it was it Rick had on Sunday was week to week. So does it seem like then there's a, not a strong possibility that he'd end up on LTI? Yeah, I don't I don't, uh, I don't uh, believe that he's going to do that. I I think he's back here sooner or later. Patrick. Uh, Training camp started great opportunities for both Nils Hoaglander and Vasily Pod Colson. They were skating with established veterans, offensive roles, and all those types of things. Obviously, Pod Colson got sent down. I know he's back on the roster right now, but Hoaglander was the odd man out the other. Like, I know this organization wants to see development from both those guys. How do you look at their preseason? Um, I, I think, again, I think the coaches wanted to set them up uh, for succeed and, and uh, have them uh, surrounded by veteran uh, players and, and leadership players as Petey and Miller here. So um, I think Put Colson uh, coming in had a, a really good uh, summer, uh, stronger, confident. Uh, when we started to play games, I thought he uh, squeezed his stick a little bit, uh, wasn't able to create uh, the way he's, he's capable of doing. And, uh, as the camp moved along here, there were other players that, uh, that outperformed him. And uh, we felt as a staff that uh, the best thing for him to develop into the, the, the NHL player that he's capable of being was to uh, go down to Abbotsford and, and continue work on his game there. And, Nil, and Nil, Nils, uh, I think, again, uh, top five in fitness testing, uh, really committed this summer. Uh, again, uh, just shows uh, how competitive it is uh, to get on this, uh, this roster right now. This organization has long tried to reflect the community it's in. You guys have been leaders on Pride Night. Um, are you guys disappointed that Pride Tape has been banned? You know what? Uh, decisions like that, that's uh, something we follow the NHL, um, w what they recommend. Uh, I think this organization has done a lot of good things in the community, as you mentioned here, and we will continue to do that. But uh, we definitely follow the, the league rules and what they're uh, telling us to do. You're still allowed to have an opinion on the league rules. Are you happy with that? I, again, regarding the league rules, we're just following them. Patrick, on Sunday, UBC, Rick said he had to kick Teddy off the ice because he had a bump and a bruise. But he said he tried to get it out, but Rick said I had to kick him off the ice. Um, you've held a history with him. Obviously, you acquired him for a reason. Is there an intangible with Teddy, aside from the PK, being able to play the middle? Is there something special about him that's really intriguing when you guys acquire him? Well, I think Teddy is one of those quiet leaders. Uh, talking to uh, our strength coach, Alex, Alex Trinka, uh, when, we, when we got to Alex here this summer, he, he mentioned that Teddy was uh, one of the leaders, um, how you do uh, things day to day, uh, the practice commitment. Uh, 
driving it in the, in the gym. Um, I think Teddy is capable of doing much more, uh, but he, he let his play speak for itself instead of uh, his, uh, his talking there. So I have, uh, I've been very pleased with Teddy, and I think the coaches uh, have been as well. How effective was he with Lafferty? Uh, they grew up together in Wilkesbury. Uh, they were very familiar with, with, with each other. So when the trade uh, yeah. happened, there, uh, I believe Sam reached out to Teddy and was extremely happy to uh, uh, rejoin Teddy and uh, Casey there. So um, that should be a, a pretty good combination. Do you think this team, more guys, do you think this team is better than it was last season? And if so, where? I think we changed our group, absolutely. Um, I think we're, uh, we're uh, as we speak uh, of today, I think there is more depth. Uh, we clearly have seen a lot of gro growth in, in our younger players that didn't even make uh, the opening night roster here that, that showed us that they're capable of coming up anytime and give us games. None of them, in our opinion, were ready to play 82 games. But they sure, uh, at any time, will uh, make the coaches comfortable uh, calling them up. I do think that uh, our depth, uh, centers, and uh, bottom six has improved. And uh, the message to the players from the coaching staff of uh, commitment to the fitness level in order to play the right way has also improved our group. Patrick, I want to ask you about. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Does it feel more like your team? Uh, we're getting there. Um, I think this is a building process. Uh, I don't think they're never uh, uh, set in stone, and we would just continue to see uh, how we can get better here. I want to ask you about PD. There was a report this weekend that as he kind of goes through his process of determining a commitment to the organization, that the organization also may not be sure themselves about whether they want to commit in that direction. Can you comment at all on where you're at in terms of your desire to keep PD? Uh, I, I'm not aware of what you're referring to. Uh, um, but I, I, as I said all along, I, like, I have a great relationship with PD. I have a great relationship with his uh, representative. Uh, and uh, we just uh, continue to talk here, and uh, hopefully we can get something done. When, season, when the summer started, did you think you'd have him sign to an extension by the beginning of the season? Uh, if that happened, I would be uh, ex extremely happy. Uh, but uh, we'll see. Uh, we're again. He, he's not a UFA, so we got uh, two more years uh, uh, with the rights to him. So we'll we'll take our time, and I'm sure he will take his time. So, uh, but we're, we're not. Uh, we're, we're, we'll continue to talk. One more from Thomas, please. And then we're done. Patrick, just want to ask you about Cole McGuard, who was in the running. It seemed to make the team right until the final day. And then obviously he's got the higher cap hit, can't necessarily uh, fit him in with, with everything you've got going on. What's your message to a player in that circumstance who obviously impressed you and the staff, um, and, and I'm sure will get a shot, but wasn't on the opening day lineup? Yeah, a good question. I think uh, when you come down to, uh, obviously Cole played a couple of games last year. Um, I, I think it's always that uh, the fine balance, how to protect young players and not put them in, in a position to fail. Um, in this particular uh, player, I think uh, the coaches uh, really growed on him, uh, on how his camp uh, came along and, and how he fitted in in the way we want to play. But I also don't think it's a, a, a something negative for him to go down to, to Abbotsford and start there and, and having uh, key minutes and being a big part of it. So um, all those decisions are kind for us of a bigger picture and, and guys going to um, more earn it and, and uh, respect the league a little bit more and, and for us to protect them. So I think Cole has put himself in a really good situation for call-ups and, and so have uh, Heros and, and Philip Johansson as well. So I'm, I'm very pleased with the depth we have.